So high 27 or for us who live in the Anglosphere of NATO designation, flankers. Telling the story of the flankers is not difficult, it's just impossible. It is one of those aircraft like the F-4 or the F-16 or the MiG-21 which are pretty much cornerstones of the history of aviation. In fact, there are so many variants uh, in so many different nations and in fact some flankers are merely shaped like a flanker. More than variants, they are actually descendants. And this is definitely the case for the largest flanker user in the world. No, definitely it's not Russia. We talk a lot about the J-20, the J-10, the, the coming J-35, but the core of the Chinese Air Force is made of flankers. There are about 450 J-11, about 170 J-16, 71 Su-30 MMK, 24 Su-35s and 32 Su-27 UBK. This is a total of about 750 flanker. The total of J-20 and J-10 doesn't reach 700. Oh, and I forgot the Chinese Navy that has about 130 flankers in service of various types, including about 30 J-15s that are carrier capable. What? Uh, oh, you don't know what a J-11 is? Oh, well, no worries, we are here to explain. The Chinese relationship with flankers starts in 1992. The Chinese were aware of the dangerous backwardness of their aeronautical industry and their air force, so in a typical Chinese fashion they started a long-term program to modernize both. A big part of this modernization effort was centered around the Russian flanker. The first aircraft to be delivered were Russian-made Su-27 UBK for training and they were followed soon after by other Su-27s that are now no longer in service. The J-11 though started in 1996, while 200 aircraft had been purchased from Russia, but those aircraft have been delivered as kits to be assembled. In this first stage, the J-11 was a version of the Russian Su-27 and it was designed to be an air superiority fighter. Being the Chinese aircraft industry what it was at the time, they had to wait 2003 before acceptable quality flankers could be assembled. And even in this case, some of the aircraft components had to be replaced with Chinese-made components slightly different than the original, just to be able to complete the aircraft. The cooperation with Russia on this project ended in 2004, when the Chinese started doing what they were extremely good at at the time, building replicas under the name of J-11B. This indeed irritated the Russians, because this initiative was violating the intellectual property provisions in the original agreement. So the Russians reacted very badly and they, well, just kept selling stuff to China because they were their best customer and they just couldn't shun them. The Chinese, on the other hand, kept acquiring know-how and experience improving the aircraft. They integrated new weapons, they integrated new electronics, they made it lighter and they started developing an indigenous engine. When they got to the fourth production block with the indigenous WS-10 engine and Chinese avionics, well, that was something utterly different from the original Suhoi 27. Well, it still is because most of the J-11s have been brought to the latest standard and the older ones are being delivered to flight academies, but well, this is another story. The J-11B keeps the formidable aerodynamics and general configuration of the flanker, but the inside is completely different. It is now a multi-role aircraft, even though the main mission remains air superiority, and the systems are Chinese systems, indigenous Chinese systems. But the story doesn't end here, because the J-11D is going to enter service soon, the prototypes are flying. 
probably as we speak some units are already being delivered. Analysts believe that this is the best flanker existing in the world, even better than the Russian Suhoi 35. We will have time to delve deep into the design of the J11D, but for now, let's go back to 2011. In fact, in 2011, a strange two-seater flanker took the skies for the first time. The G16 is designed to be a multi-role strike fighter. It is capable of virtual combat, but its main mission is ground attack. Some analysts say that the J16 stays to the J11 as the F15E stays to the F15C. With this flanker variant, the Chinese really cut their teeth against the extremely difficult task of designing a cutting-edge modern combat aircraft. The aircraft is lighter than other dual-seater flankers because composites are used extensively. All the avionics, all the combat systems are made in China and there is no dependency left from Russian-made components. RCS reduction measures have been taken, including painting the aircraft with rather absorbing materials. The radar is a new Chinese AESA radar and the armament is a panoply of everything available in the Chinese arsenals. The J-16 is still in production and their numbers keep growing. From 2021, a SEAT version has been delivered, equipped with several electronic warfare pods and anti-radiation missiles. Its capabilities are yet to be assessed, but it definitely shows an increase in sophistication in the Chinese industry. We have covered in previous videos the Chinese air-to-ground weaponry, and if you're interested, I suggest you to have a look. Links above and below. Some thought that the J-16 was going to become the centerpiece of the Chinese flanker fleet, but the recent introduction of J-11D shows that the Chinese are developing the two aircraft in parallel, and they will both remain essential components of the Chinese Air Force for the foreseeable future. We can think that the Chinese are trying to reproduce a high-low mix with their indigenous aircraft, but the jury is still out, so we'll see. J-15 is the carrier-capable version. We have already discussed the aircraft when we discussed the new aircraft carrier Fujian. As usual, links above and below. For the new carrier, the J-15B, which is actually catapult compatible, is undergoing tests. And it seems that the Chinese took the opportunity to hugely modernize the aircraft. In fact, it seems to have inherited some of the systems of the J-11 and the J-16. And indeed, the J-15 actually needed some care because uh, it has never been a particularly brilliant aircraft and the current version is basically obsolete. Although China is no longer dependent from Russia for most of the aerospace technology, there are still some Russian-made flankers in service in China. Twin-seater Su-30 MMKs have been part of the deliveries in the early 2000s. They are a derivation of the Russian Su-30 adapted for Chinese specifications. And indeed, this adaptation included adopting some of the Suhoi 35 systems, creating a overall very capable aircraft. In fact, despite their age, the Chinese seem to consider them still very effective platforms. We may expect that they will be replaced by the J-16s in the future, but but for the moment they're still up and running, despite their age. I mean, it is 20 years old. We live in a day and age where the average lifespan of an aircraft is about 40 years, and this is true everywhere but in China. The speed of their development is mind-boggling. Early 2000s for them is already legacy. China also have in service 24 Suhoi 35 made in Russia, but these aircraft are sort of a different matter. They are operational, they are assigned to operational units, 
but they're very different from other Chinese flankers and they're not fully integrated with the rest of the Chinese Air Force. Some sources report, for example, that they have incompatible data links with pretty much any other Chinese aircraft. They basically exist just because the Chinese wanted to reverse engineer some of the systems of the Suhoi 35 and in particular the AL-41 engine. There are unconfirmed voices that the Chinese on purpose tampered with the aircraft in order to break it triggering the anti-tamper protections only to see how the Russians brought the aircraft back online and find a work around these protections. And apparently the Russians were well aware of what the Chinese were doing, but they just looked the other way because it was still a good business. Now I'm sure that you want to get into the details of the J-11, the J-16 and the other aircraft and be patient, there are other videos in the making. A big big thank you to all those who are supporting the channel on Patreon by being a member or giving some donation on PayPal. You can also support the channel by buying a model from Air Models, there is an affiliate link below, I have a small percentage and there is no extra cost for you. In the meanwhile I have plenty of videos on the most modern aircraft of China, like the J20 or the J10 and those videos are going to appear beside me. In the meanwhile, thank you very much for watching and see you there.